Genesis chapter 50, the last chapter of Genesis. Hmm, I might need to make a special phone call. I'll have to look into that. What day is today? Is today Saturday? Oh, Friday. Ooh, that, like, that was my, I had to get it all done today. Hmm. I was actually told there'd be a chance we'd have a special guest join me for this on a live stream. So I'll have to see what I can do about that and have a special guest join me for like a special Genesis q and I'll set that up for next week, maybe. We'll start Matthew next week, but then I think I might have a special Genesis Q&A time. So you guys better have some Genesis questions if we do a Genesis Q&A. So, um, all that said, chapter 50. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father so that the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required for him, for such were the days required for those who were embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him seven, 70 days. So, Remember, there's no chapter breaks when this was written. And so it's just moving right on down, uh, describing the death of Jacob. And now, verse 4. Now, when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your eyes, please speak in the hearing of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Behold, I am dying in my grave, which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan, where you shall bury me. Now, therefore, please let me go up and bury my father, and I will come back. And Pharaoh said, go up and bury your father, as he has made you swear. And so, truth be told, we're going to move right along. I just read this the other day for McShane, and it's a pretty fast-moving chapter. Um, Joseph goes up to bury his father, and all the people of Egypt, they join him. Uh, everyone, minus like the little kids and the herds, uh, they all go, little kids and herds, they stay back in Goshen. And they go up with him, both chariots and horsemen in verse 9. There's this great gathering. And they go all the way up to the, to the. it says in verse 10, they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan. They mourned there with great and very solemn lamentation and observed seven days of mourning for his father. So this is like a big to-do they do for, for Jacob when he dies. In verse 11, the inhabitants of Canaan saw the mourning of the threshing floor of Atad, and they said, this is a deep mourning of the Egyptians. Therefore, it is called Abel Mirazim, which is beyond the Jordan. And that means uh, literally the mourning of Egypt. So his sons did for him just as he had commanded them, for his sons carried him to the land of Canaan, buried him in the cave of Machpelah before Mamre, which Abraham bought the field from Ephron the Hittite as property for a burial place. And after he buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt and he and his brothers and all who went with him to bury his father. So he gets buried in the tomb of the patriarchs with Abraham and Isaac, his dad and his grandpa. And when Joseph's brothers saw their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, Before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespasses, or the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when he spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face, saying, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am, am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as to this day, to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I'll provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Truth be told, we're just going to finish the chapter. And I'm going to come back around to verse 20. So Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were also brought up on Joseph's knees. And Joseph said to his brethren, Am I, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land, the land which he swore to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you will carry up my bones from here. 
So Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Boom, Genesis is done. Tomorrow, maybe I'll do something a little special, and we'll actually talk about the time that takes place in between Genesis and Exodus. So you'll get to know a little bit about the gap between those two time periods. I'll have to go back and do a little bit of studying on my own. Um, but let's see here. Oh, yeah, I've got all sorts of... Uh, yeah, yeah. I've got a timeline in my Exodus notes. All sorts of good stuff. But really, verse 20, uh, I, I shared it the other day when we read it for McShane. Um, it's the Romans 8.28 of the Old Testament. God works all things to the good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And like Joseph said, what you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. You see, it doesn't matter even if we mess up big, God can work it to the good. God can accomplish his will. And even if, you know, we, we make mistakes, that's the beautiful thing about being a believer is that sometimes we have anxiety and worries about making the right decisions. And ultimately, we don't need to worry about making the right decisions. What we need to worry about is loving God. If we're loving God, good morning, Alejandro, then we know God will work it out. And that you could even make the wrong decision, but it's still right. Because God will work all things to the good. And so when we have these decisions and we have these things that we're worried about, we just need to remember that God will work it to the good as long as we're loving him. And so as we face decisions, we just need to take it to the word. And all right, Lord, is what I'm doing biblical? Is what I'm doing make sense? Am I making my decisions out of fear or out of faith? Is my decision based off of trusting you? And at the end of the day, you can't go wrong as a believer because God will work it out. And maybe the situation won't turn out the way you were hoping it would, but that doesn't mean you made the wrong decision. Maybe it just means that God knew, well, something will be learned through the tough consequences. Something will be learned through the trial. One way or another, God will use the situation and he'll grow you. He will make you stronger. He will give you a testimony that can be used to minister to countless other people. And all you need to be worried about is loving God. And that's kind of where Joseph was at. As we watch him go into slavery and go into prison, you know, he fled from Potiphar's wife. Why? Because he didn't want to sin against the Lord. He loved the Lord. And he went through years of turmoil and trouble until finally he saw the fruition of that love of God and what they had meant for evil, God intended it to be used for good. And so we can trust that with God, that he'll take all things and he'll always work it for good. All right, guys, that's the book of Genesis. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll have something for you. Maybe it'll be a nerdy presentation, but it'll be interesting, I think. And then Matthew chapter 1, come Monday. God bless.